Chapter 2, Part 1 The Basics of Electrodics Electrochemistry world can be split into two worlds. The first world is electrodics, which focuses on what happens around the electrodes, so it is called electrodics. The second world is ionics. Ionics is about some ion movement inside of electrolyte, which is ionics. For this chapter, you can read some Bard and Faulkner books about 1.1 to 1.2.3, also 1.3 and 2.1. So the first one is about ferrodeic and non-ferrodeic processes. Let me start with reduction and oxidation. You know, this is the electrochemical cell, which is galvanic cells. You have two electrodes and electrolyte. The first electrode is about zinc 2 plus zinc electrochemistry, and the second electrode is about copper 2 plus and copper electrode. Let me draw the electrochemical ordinate. So this is the electrochemical ordinate. My here is the plus and here is minus. So zinc 2 plus zinc, zinc 2 plus zinc at minus 0 0.76 volt and copper 2 plus copper is at plus 0 0.34 volt. The reduction potential of zinc is more negative than the reduction potential of copper so zinc would donate its own electron into copper. So Zinc is dissolved, uh, dis dissolved into electrolyte as a form of zinc 2 plus. At the same time, if you have uh, copper 2 plus ions in electrolyte, copper 2 plus is electro deposited on the electrode. So electron flows from here uh, to there, again from more ne negative reduction potential to more positive potential. That is the electrochemical cell, specifically galvanic cells. So what kind of lessons we would obtain from this picture? Electrochemical reactions are always paired, in this case, reduction from zinc part, and no, 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 oxidation from zinc part and reduction from copper part. So reduction is always paired with oxidation to complete a circuit. One donates electrons, so oxidation, while the other accepts the electrons, reduction. A closed circuit consists of electri electronically conducting pathway and ionically conducting pathway. So from zinc electrode to copper wire to copper electrode, uh, is about the electronically conducting pathway. Also, at the half of the circuit, we have some ionically conducting pathway. That is the circuit for electrochemical cell. Let me say, say about the cathode and anode. What happens? Reduction. In the case of reduction, maybe in this picture, copper to plus copper. So, from the viewpoint of electrode, uh, the electrode would donate the electron to copper 2 plus. So, this is the electrode, and, and copper 2 plus is existing inside of electrolyte. So, electrode would donate the electron to copper 2 plus. And reactant, from the viewpoint of reactant, the copper 2 plus accepts electron. So, in, the ca in this in the case of this reduction reaction, the electrode is called cathode. Again, the cathode is the electrode at which reduction happens. 
Let me go to the other reaction, which is oxidation. From the viewpoint of electrode, uh, the electrode would accept electron, and the reactant would donate the electron. So in this case, if the reactant is um, zinc, and zinc uh, donate electron to the out circuit, outer circuit, and the outer circuit would accept the electron. So it is called oxidation, and the oxidation electrode is called anode. So this is the anode. Here is the uh, memorization tip, hint or tip. Reduction is related to the cathode because both words start with consonant C and R. However, oxidation is related to anode because both words start with vowel, R-A-E-O-O, vowel. So, oxidation is going to anode. This is just a memorization tip. Okay, so before saying about the Faradaic process or non-Faradaic process, we uh, should know who Michael Faraday is. Michael Faraday, from uh, 1791 to 1867, in Korean history, uh, King the fifth year of King Jongjo, and uh, to the fourth year of King Gojong. He opened the field of electromagnetism, where electricity can be made by moving a magnet inside a wire, wire coil. Therefore, the Michael Faraday is the first inventor of electric motor, generator, and transformer. Also, he made the words like ion, electrode, cathode, and anode. Also, he discovered benzene, and also he is a powerful speaker. You know, Faraday, Farad, uh, the unit Farad, uh, is a measure of capacitance to honor his accomplishment. Also, the other thing is Faraday constant, which is equal to 96500 Coulomb per mole electron. The meaning of Farad, no, no, no. The meaning of Faraday constant is the amount of charge of one mole of electrons. Again, one mole of electrons have 96500 Coulomb. It is very important uh, constant for electrochemistry. Okay, here is an overall picture of an electrochemical reactions. So here is some reduction reaction. Ox stands for oxidized species like Fe2 plus plus some electron, number of electron with electron is going to reduce the species like um, uh, Fe0. Or let me change the example. So let me say this is the Fe3 plus plus one electron is going to Fe2 plus. That is the good example for this reaction. So Fe3 plus is called oxidized species and Fe2 plus is called reduced species. Okay, right now we have this kind of things. So, in this picture, you have electrode here, and here is the electrolyte. Electrolyte have two reasons. The first one is bulk solution far from the electrode, and the second one is the electrode surface region. Let me start with the oxidized species in bulk solution for explain explaining about the pathway of an electrochemical reactions. 
Here is the bulk oxygen species, is, which is diffused while mass transferred into the surface region, electrode surface region, which is called sulf, uh, ox, ox, oxygen, uh, no, 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 surface oxidized species. And this step is called mass transfer step, or shortly MT, or sometimes I'd like to name it as just D. D stands for diffusion. This mass transfer uh, could happen uh, due to diffusion process or migration or convection processes. However, in the electrochemistry, the diffusion process is the most, most important mass transfer step. So it is called the mass transfer step or diffusion step. So right now, we have the ox oxidized species in the electrode surface region. And sometimes, not always, sometimes the oxidized species on surface uh, is chemically changed into O-prime. Still, we have this O-prime in the electrode surface region. This step is called chemical step, or C step. Then, O prime is adsorbed onto the surface of electrode. That is the O prime adsorbed. This adsorbed species could get the electron from electrode, then finally converted into R prime adsorbed. This step is called charge transfer or CT step. Sometimes E step stands for electrochemical step. So right now we have three steps. The mass transfer step, or D step, or chemical step, C step, and electrochemical step, E step. Then right now, on the surface of electrode, we have R prime adsorbed instead of O prime adsorbed. This R prime adsorbed is dissolved into R prime in the electrode surface region, and also this guy could get could experience some chemical reactions. So right now R surface, this is also chemical step after the charge transfer, and R surface is diffused out of the surface region into bulk solution region. So I finally we have R bulk after uh, the experiencing some mass transfer step or E step. Electrodics is focusing on around here the, the what happens at the interface between electrode and electrolyte. Ionics focuses on the some ion movement inside of electrolyte. That is the overview picture of electrochemical reaction. Okay, so it's time to say uh, about uh, what difference is between Faradaic processes and non-Faradaic processes. Faradaic processes or Faradaic reactions are the just reduction or oxidation. Reduction or oxidation is the Faradaic process. So, in the Faradaic process, electron should pass the interface from electrode to electrolyte, while electrolyte to electrode. So, let me say about Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. This is the Fe3 plus. This is the Fe2 plus. So, for the reduction, electron comes from the electrode and finally to the uh, Fe3 plus in electrolyte. So electrons move, move from electrode to electrolyte. Then finally we can get the Fe2 plus. Or for the oxidation, uh, the electrons of Fe2 plus is moving from electrolyte to electrode, then we would obtain the Fe3 plus. So, 
In the cases of faradic processes, electrons should pass the interface. I mean, the process should have the electron jump across the interface between electrolyte and electrode. The reduction and also oxidation would lead to chemical change. So we can say this is a kind of chemical reaction. On the other hand, we have non faradaic process. Here is the situation. See, we have the metal and there is some electrolyte uh, inside of which we have some ions. So the situation is that we have applied some negative potential into the matter. And then right now, you can find nine negative charges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine the negative charges to neutralize or compensate the extra nine elect, um, negative charges, we need to have some uh, redistribution of ions inside of electrolyte. For example, this is a kind of a very uh, schematic explanation. In the electrolyte, we have the first layer where we have five plus, one, two, three, four, five, and one negative ions. Again, five cations and one anions. So the net charge is uh, uh, net charge of the first layer is four plus. So uh, four plus and four minus are compensated to each other between metal part and electrolyte part. Also, in the following second layer, we have um, four cations and two anions, so net charge is 2 plus. Additionally, two, charge number 2 is compensated. And in the third layer, we have two cation, one anion, so one plus. The total summation of this kind of extra charges, actually extra positive charges, should be equal to the uh, extra negati negative charges of metal electrode. That is the non faradaic processes. We have experienced some redistribution of ions to compensate the extra charges of electrode. non faradaic process actually not lead to chemical change, not lead to chemical change. So actually it is not the reaction. The basic a basic force is electrostatic force between different charges. Here is negative charges and here is the positive net charges. No electron can touch any species in electrolyte or vice versa. So there are no electron jump between electrode and electrolyte, which is the big difference from the Faradaic process. Okay? In the faradic processes, we need to have electron transfer between electrolyte and electrode. However, no electron transfer found in non faradic processes. The non faradic processes is, are based on purely electrostatic force. Okay, so let me give you some more detailed explanation about the non faradaic process. The non faradaic process is the process of the electric double layer formation. What is the electric double layer? I mean, when you are meeting the non faradaic process, you always have electric double layers. Okay, this is the schematic picture for the electric double layer. Here is the electrode or metal and you have applied some negative potential. Where metal, this metal has uh, some negative point of zero charge. Point of, I, uh, okay, the, this metal have its own point of, of zero charge and negative potential. And on the electrolyte side, you have 
uh, two layers. The first layer is called Helmholtz layer and this layer have two sub-layers just on the surface of electrode. In the first layer, you have the solvent molecules. If you have an aqueous electrolyte, this circle indicates water. This is the very first layer of the Helmholtz layer. The plane, this plane, uh, connected to the surface of water molecules is called inner Helmholtz plane. Let's go to the second layer, second sub-layer of Helmholtz layer. In the second Helmholtz um, no, no. In the second, second sub-layer of the Helmholtz layer, you have positively charged ions, which is used for compensating, compensating the extra negative charges. And each positive ions are solvated by water molecules. This is the second layer of the Helmholtz layer, and the plane. Uh, to connect the center of positive charges is called outer Hel Helmholtz plane. So this is the Helmholtz layer. And then let's go to the second layer, which is called diffusion layer. Uh, the charge compensation, the extra or the additional charge compensation, compensation is done by the diffusion layer by distribution of counter ions following exponentially decayed electric potential. So you have a thicker diffusion layer. At the very first layer of diffusion layer, we have some concentration of positively charged ions solvated by water molecules, and the next layer. The, uh, would have a similar number of uh, the positively charged species or something like that. So it is called electric double layer because you have Helmholtz layer and then followed by diffusion layer. Uh, let me um, explain about the electric double layer in terms of potential. So almost the same picture and this part is the electrode and this part is the electrolyte. The in this situation, uh, my battery electrode have very negative potential. Also, my electrolyte is, more, is on the more positive potential. To match those two big difference potential uh, values, we need to have some distribution of charges. That is the electric double layer. So in the Helmholtz layer, <coughs> with this range, uh, the Helmholtz layer would cover the, for example, 60 or 70 percent of charge compensation. And then the rest of charge is compensated by the diffuser layer. That is the electric double layer, and electric double layers are always observed, even without applied potential, also even without any Faraday processes. <coughs> A solid is immersed into liquid, then sometimes you could obtain some potential difference between the, the electrode and electrolyte. So, uh, and one more important thing, you always find this electric double layer formation. Even without any applied potential, even without any Faraday processes, you always have this kind of electric double layer. Subchapter 2 about reduction potential. Actually, you have learned <coughs> about the concept and almost everything of reduction potential in the previous basic classes.
in this slide, I'd like to explain the reduction and also oxidation from the viewpoint of molecular orbital perspectives. The first thing you should know is electrochemistry controls energy level of electrons. The first one is reduction case and this is the electrode and as you know we have a lot of electrons in metal electrode. By applying some potentials you can control the energy level of the electrons inside of electrode. Anyway, this is the electrode part and this is the electrolyte part. You have an electroactive species in solution or electrolyte and each electroactive species has its own HOMO and LUMO. What is the HOMO and what is LUMO? <coughs> HOMO is a highly occupied molecular orbital and LUMO is... no no no. A, a HOMO is a stand for uh, highest occupied molecular orbital and the uh, LUMO stands for the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So in this energy level you have uh, the fully occupied uh, elect the uh, fully electron occupied energy level. Also in the uh, LUMO you have vacant molecular orbital. So, this is the starting point and right now the energy level of electron is between the energy levels of HOMO and LUMO. So, this the electrode energy level is higher than the occupied molecular orbital. <coughs> we could uh, donate the electron from the electrode into the occupied molecular orbital. However, it is impossible because there are no there are no vacant loom in the occupied molecular orbital because those occupied molecular orbital is occupied fully by electrons already. Uh, also, we cannot donate our electron or electrode electrons into vacant molecular orbital because. The, the energy level of vacant molecular orbital is higher or more negative than the energy levels of electrons of electrode. Then uh, I am applying some negative potential into electrode. The energy level of electrons is going up, going up like that. And when the energy level of electrons in electrode is more negative than the energy level of LUMO of the electroactive species existing in solution, then electron is transferred from electrode to the electroactive species. This is the reduction process and the LUMO level of electroactive species is responsible for the reduction in terms of energy level. Let's go to the oxidation and the starting point is the same uh, as shown in the reduction case. However, in this case I am applying some positive potential. So energy level of electrons is going down and then finally the energy level of the electrons in electrode is more positive than, well, lower than the energy level of occupied molecular orbital. So, electron is transferred from the electroactive species and uh, to the, the, the electrode. So, oxidation happens in terms of the electroactive species. This is the explanation about reduction and oxidation from molecular orbital perspectives. Um, electrochemical ordinate is here and minus sign plus sign you have one two three four four electroactive species pair like zinc two plus zinc minus 0 0.76 then Fe2 plus Fe, 
minus 0 0.45 volt then um, the proton reduction or hydrogen evolution reaction at 0 volt and copper 2 plus copper pair found in 0 0.34 volt so the kind of electrochemical species uh, is along the reduction potential and the reduction potential uh, defines the reduction process and oxidation process here is here is another series of some matters you have learned from Korean high school so let me say in partly in English partly in Korean kal kal na ma al a zinc is iron in Korea chal chal is fe in Korean ni ju chusok is tin and nap is lead sugu sun sun un pekum kum anyway so we have this kind of series uh, the potassium calcium sodium magnesium aluminum zinc uh, iron nickel tin lead hydrogen copper uh, mercury silver platinum gold this is the series of uh, the electrochemical pairs along the electrochemical ordinate um, the upper position have the more negative reduction potential and the lower position indicates more positive reduction potential electron transfer is always following from the top to the bottom okay so that is the way to read the electrochemical ordinate the reduction uh, uh, this is a kind of the review content the reduction potential is defined by reduction so oxidized species uh, get some electron and then going to reduce the species reduction potentials are related to gives free energy like uh, energy is equal to Q with voltage so energy electric energy can be defined as Q V right so V is going to the potential and minus NF is going to charge of electrons so reduction potentials uh, are the gives free energy of electrochemical reactions the more positive reduction potential the more positive reduction potential indicates easier reduction so for example copper 2 plus copper 2 plus copper species have the very positive reduction potential so from the viewpoint of electrons uh, they are poor guys they always got the electrons or accept electrons from the more negative reduction potential guy the more, more negative reduction potential indicates the easier oxidation because uh, the more negative value of reduction potential uh, uh, the supports the um, the rich guys of electrons so they could donate their own electron into the poorer species in terms of electrons electrons flow from negative potential to positive so from the top to the bottom in the electrochemical ordinate uh, you can find some the reduction potential of some electrochemical active species in CRC handbook or the appendix of Bard and Faulkner okay um, possible reactions following electrochemical series we have three different situations uh, in this slide and uh, let me start with the first one electrochemical ordinate and we have Fe3 plus in electrolyte and Tin4 plus 
uh, proton and nickel 2 plus in electrolyte and I have used the platinum platinum as the working electrode and the NH normal hydrogen electrode as the reference electrode uh, the starting point is here let me say plus 0 0.85 volt and then right now I'm um, sweep I'm sweeping the potential from 0 point, plus 0 0.85 to minus 0 0.4 volt. So let me start at this point, and then when uh, I passed the potential at 0 0.77 volt, Fp3 plus is reduced into Fp2 plus. Then you could find some a value of current. Then the next one is tin 4 plus at 0 0.15 volt. Then reduction happens from tin 4 plus to tin 2 plus. Next one is proton is going to hydrogen gases and next one is nickel 2 plus uh, is electro deposited uh, on two electrode as the nickel matter at minus 0 0.25 volt and each uh, reaction uh, is described by current in electrochemistry let's go to the other reduction case in this case we have a proton a chromium 3 plus and then zinc 2 plus the working electrode is mercury instead of platinum and also the, the reference electrode is the same which is the normal hydrogen electrode uh, I'd like to start from the minus 0 0.1 volt and then when we pass around the 0 volt we expect we would expect the proton reduction or hydrogen evolution however uh, this hydrogen evolution reaction on mercury is kinetically very slow so uh, the current uh, is not flowing at zero volt however when we are going to about for example minus 0 0.2 volt you could find the current responsible for the proton reduction because we have applied enough of potential next one is chromium 3 plus is going to chromium 2 plus at minus 0 0.4 volt you can find some current which is responsible for this reduction and the next one is zinc deposition on the mercury electrode at minus 0 0.76 volt the third uh, situation is, is about the oxidation process so right now we have tin 2 plus iodide minus Fe2 plus water and gold in aqueous electrolyte and we are using the gold as the working electrode and the reference electrode is normal hydrogen electrode uh, the starting point is about plus 0 0.5 um, volt then I am scanning the potential to the negative no 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 to the positive uh, direction for oxidizing those species the first one we can meet is tin 2 plus to tin 4 plus again tin 2 plus oxidation and my plus 0.15 volt and then iodide minus is oxidized then Fe2 plus is oxidized and around 1.23 volt the water solvent uh, is oxidized into oxygen then we are going to the gold to gold 3 plus at plus 1.5 volt so uh, each species has its own uh, reduction potential and around that reduction potential you can find the Faraday current uh, responsible for each electrochemistry
Here we have two different cells which are the galvanic cells and electrolytic cells uh, with the same electrodes. Let me start with galvanic cell. We have two electrodes as you expected and the first one is based on zinc 2 plus zinc and the other one is based on copper 2 plus copper. Uh, let me check the reduction potential of those two electrochemistry. So zinc 2 plus zinc electrochemistry is placed on minus 0 0.76. Um, then copper 2 plus copper electrochemistry is on plus 0 0.34 volt. So the reduction potential of zinc 2 plus zinc is more negative than the reduction potential of copper 2 plus copper. So um, the zinc would donate their own electrons into the copper 2 plus. Then what happens? On this blue electrode, uh, zinc is going to zinc 2 plus, which is dissolved into electrolyte. Also, at the same time, the, the copper 2 plus ions existing in electrolyte is electrodeposited on the red electrode. When you have connected those two electrodes uh, with a copper wire and sometimes with a resistance, then you could observe some electron flows from this um, oxidation electrode into the reduction electrode. Then you could find some potential gap between those two things at 1.1 volt. So the blue one where zinc electrode is called anode because you could observe the oxidation. On the other hand, the copper electrode could be considered as the cathode because uh, the, the copper 2 plus is reduced to copper. This is the galvanic cells is based on spontaneous reactions and because of the uh, because we ha we are using the spontaneous reactions we could get some electricity between those two electrodes. And then let's go to the electrolytic cells. And in this configuration, we have the same electrode and same electrochemistry. Still, we have zinc 2 plus zinc and copper 2 plus copper uh, are there as the electrochemistry for each electrode. Then, in, uh, in this case, I'd like to apply some potentials. Let me check again the reduction potential of each electrochemistry. Zinc, zinc 2 plus and copper, copper 2 plus here. Then I'd like to apply some potential onto the blue electrode or zinc electrode uh, at, the at some energy level which is more negative than minus 0 0.762 volt. So let me say I have applied the potential at minus 0 0.9 volt to the zinc electrode. <laughs> also, I want to apply some uh, um, some some the potential onto the copper electrode at which uh, the potential or energy level which is more positive than the copper to plus copper electrochemistry. So let me say plus 0 0.5 volt. And then you could observe the electron transfer from minus 0 0.9 volt to minus 0 0.76 volt. Also, uh, you can observe in the other electrode from plus 0 0.42 volt to plus 0 0.5 volt electron. So, For the zinc electrode, you could observe the reduction instead of oxidation. So zinc 2 plus is going to zinc, <coughs> which is a kind of electrodeposition of zinc metal on the electrode. Also, you could observe the, the oxidation uh, on the copper electrode from copper metal into copper 2 plus. So uh, all electrochemistry 
is reversed by applying some potential into the system. In that case, the blue electrode is cathode because uh, it is based on the reduction from zinc 2 plus to zinc. Also, the, this red electrode is called anode because copper is dissolved into electrolyte as a form of copper 2 plus. Even if we have the same configuration of electrodes based on the same electrochemistry shown in the galvanic cells, but we could make the electrolytic cell after you have applied the potential into the electrode. Also, anode in galvanic cells is changed into cathode, where cathode of galvanic cells uh, uh, into the anode in electrolytic cells. That is to say, by applying some potential, we can make something of uh, our intention. That is the electrolytic cells. So let me summarize the galvanic cells and electrolytic cells. Galvanic cells uh, are based on spontaneous reactions. And the situation of discharging batteries uh, is uh, uh, belonging to the galvanic cells. However, uh, the by controlling some, uh, oh no, 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 the electrolytic cells uh, is based on applied potentials or currents. And you can make uh, some process of your intention. So, the situation of charging batteries is belonging to these electrolytic cells. And as an another uh, example, water electrolysis, which is going to the hydrogen and oxygen, is another case of these electrolytic cells. So by applies, uh, applying some potentials, you can make some ele electrolytic cells instead of galvanic cells. Okay, so let me calculate the cell potentials of galvanic cells and electrolytic cells. You did it uh, in the previous uh, the, the, the chapters or classes. So by definition, the cell potential is cathode minus anode. So write down the electrochemistry in terms of the reduction. And what is the cathode in these galvanic cells? So copper, 2 plus copper, electrochemistry. Right down here, and the uh, reduction potential of this uh, process. And the other thing is anode process. But even if this is the oxidation process, but just write down the reduction process uh, for the reduction potential. Then zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons is going to zinc at minus 0 0.76 volt. And then uh, uh, the numerical operation with some negative signs here. So this is going to there. And then the second reaction is reversed. So finally, you could find some full cell reaction without any electron, because electrons are removed to each other. Then the resultant cell potential of galvanic cells are the one plus 1.10 volt. Plus means spontaneous reaction. And let's go to the electrolytic cells. The cell potential of electrolytic cell is the minimum um, potential, minimum potential required for making that electrolysis. So in this case, where uh, you want to make the uh, reduction of zinc 2 plus. So this is the cathode and cathode and minus 0.76 volt here. And how, what is the anode? You want to make the uh, copper metal into copper 2 plus. So that is the anode process. So minus anode is equal to copper 2 plus plus 2 electron is going to copper at plus 0.34 volt. And the 
cell potential required for making the electrolysis is minus 1.10 volt. This is the minimum value. Usually you should apply the more negative potential into the system. So minus 1.10 volt is the applied potential required. So check the sign for both cases. The galvanic cells have the positive cell potential. However, electrolytic cells have the negative cell potential. There is the big difference between galvanic and electrolytic cells. However, actually the signs are not very important thing. And it's time to go to the subchapter 3 uh, where I'd like to explain about the current and potential. Okay, so here is an electrochemical system and then for analyzing the electrochemical system I will, I will input a stimuli or stimulus. Sometimes we, you will apply potential, sometimes you can apply a current into the system. Then the responses of the electrochemical systems would be the current or potential. I mean, when you uh, apply some potential, you could get the current signal. Or if you are applying some current stimulus into the system, and then you could have the resp response of potentials from the electrochemical systems. In any cases, you could get the relationship between current and potential. Actually, those two uh, variables, current and potentials, are the most important variables used in electrochemistry. So usually we have drawn a curve of I or current versus E for potential or voltage. So <coughs> usually we have put the current on the y-axis and uh, we have usually put the potential on the uh, x-axis. For the for this IV curve or IE curves, we have two different notation. The first one is a kind of classic notation, uh, and uh, the the potential is going from the plus to the minus. As you know, in the electrochemical ordinate, we have put the positive signs in the downward direction and negative sign is on the, uh, the, the upward directions because the negative potential is more energetic than the, more the, the positive potential. So <coughs> it is the same meaning. So on the right side of the x-axis, we have put uh, more energetic values. And on the uh, negative direction, I mean on the left-hand side directions, uh, we have put uh, less energetic status. So usually plus is going to the minus. However, in a general notation, we have just followed the minus to plus sign like that. Then Depending on the direction of x-axis, the current signs are uh, different. In the uh, classical notation, we have the cathodic process uh, at the plus signs and we have anodic process at the positive value and uh, negative value. However, in the general notation, uh, you have the a uh, positive current for the anodic process and negative uh, current for the cathodic process. So they are different to each other, and sometimes we you would do uh, uh, be some confusion. So here is the uh, memorization tip, and 
please always use the clockwise direction. Clockwise means uh, on the upper plane, you are going to going from the plus to negative here. Then, when you uh, the when you sweep the potential from positive value to negative value, what kind of process uh, is encouraged? You are going to the negative value. Of course, reduction. So reduction means cathodic process. So cathodic is, is uh, negative, uh, no, 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 positive value on the upper plane. And let's go to the lower plane. Then in this way, uh, we are sweeping the potential from negative value to the positive value. And then when we are going to the more positive value of potentials, uh, the oxidation processes are increased. So the negative value of current is anodic process. Let me apply the same rule to the general notation. So clockwise and then on the upper plane we are going from the negative to the positive potential. So positive potential means oxidation. So the anodic process is signed by positive one. On the other hand, uh, in the lower uh, plane of this graph, you are going from the positive potential into negative potential. So negative means cathodic process or reduction. So cathodic process is signed by negative signs in the general notation. So the signs of current are depending on the direction of the potential on the x-axis. Those are two different notations for describing current versus potential. Let me think about the meaning of current and potential in electrochemistry. The potential is a measure of thermodynamics. Here is the thermodynamic equation uh, or the relationship between the Gibbs free energy and reduction potential. That is to say, the reduction potential is a Gibbs free energy change of electrochemical reaction. So therefore, uh, the, um, the reduction potential is a measure of thermodynamics. That is to say, potential is about whether a reaction is thermodynamically favorable or not. Uh, here is the energy level diagrams and here is the electrode and you have some electroactive species in electrolyte. So at the very first time, uh, the energy level of electrons in electrode is between the HOMO and LUMO. So you cannot uh, the transfer the electron from the electrode to HOMO level because the HOMO energy level is filled uh, with the electrons already. However, when you increase the potential from this middle value into the more negative value or higher energy level, then <coughs> finally you can donate the electron from electrode into the empty lumo of active, uh, electroactive species. That is the thermodynamics. So by comparing between the energy level of electrode and also reduction potential of lumo, then you could determine what kind of process is going or not. That is the thermodynamic expectation. However, if the reaction is thermodynamically favorable like that, but 
kinetically unfavored or kinetically very slow, you cannot observe the reaction. Uh, here is some example here. And then let me <coughs> draw a graph of current versus potential. X axis is the potential and here is the plus sign and this is the minus sign. So I'm saying about the classical notation of IV or IE curve. And here is the current. So this is the cathodic or reduction current. And the other things is anodic. It's very difficult to write down by using mouse. Okay, here. Then let me say the potential is measured versus normal hydrogen electrode. Then here is the zero volt versus normal hydrogen electrode. It means uh, from the viewpoint of thermodynamics, you could observe some current or uh, the onset of current from this point. When we are moving the potential from positive value to negative value, our thermodynamic expectation uh, say that the current uh, start from around the zero volt and then the current would increase when you uh, have applied more and more negative potential. However, in the experiment, you cannot find any uh, the onset or starting of the current at the thermodynamic potential. Instead of this curve, you would have let me change the color. You would have this kind of current graph along the potential. So we have a big difference between those two things. Here is the theoretical or thermodynamical. Uh, this is the experimental. Why? Because the hydrogen evolution reaction or proton reduction process is very, very slow in terms of kinetics. So you need to apply some more potential, more negative potential to cause or induce the current. So you should understand the kinetics. So next thing is current and current or shortly I is a measure of kinetics. In other words, a measure of reaction rate. That is to say, current is about how fast a reaction goes. Here is the electrochemical reduction process. Oxidized species plus uh, an electron is going to reduce the species. And then let me convert the current into the reaction rate, or the reaction rate into current. Current is defined as the Q dt. Q is the electric charge and T is the time. Q, the electric charge, is equal to uh, mole of electron by Faraday constant. That is the charge because Faraday constant is the amount of charge of one mole electron. So current is equal to d, the product of n sub e with Faraday constant dt. Uh, let me use the stoichiometric coefficient of these reactions. The stoichiometric coefficient of electron or n <coughs> is equal to moles of electron, moles of electron per moles of oxidized species. If you have uh, two electron in this chemical reaction equation, then the ratio of electron per oxidized species is equal to two. Then I can say 
uh, moles of electron is equal to stoichiometric coefficient with oxidized species. Let me put this term into here for the mole electron. Then you could find something like that. Then finally, current is equal to NF with d moles of oxidized species dt. What is that? This is the reaction rate. The unit of reaction rate is, of course, more oxidized species per second. So, the reaction rate is equal to I per NF. So, the, the reaction rate is equal to current divided by number of electron transfer, also Faraday constant. In electrochemistry, we are focusing on the area of electrode, so we are we prefer this kind of unit for the reaction rate. More oxidized species, the same per second, the same, but one more thing, per square centimeter square of electrode. So that is the reaction rate used in electrochemistry is equal to current per NF electrode area. Again, I have said current is a measure of reaction rate because current is the reaction rate. As a summary, potential is a measure of thermodynamics while the current is a measure of kinetics or reaction rate. Uh, here I have two current potential curves, this one and this one. Let me start with the first one. Here is the experimental setup. And we have a beaker. Of course, we have some electrolyte inside of the beaker. That is the one molarity of hydrogen bromide. That is to say, we would have proton and bromide minus ions in electrolyte. Platinum is used as the working electrode in this system and also silver uh, bromide coated silver wire is used as the reference electrode and also counter electrode. Then we can apply some potential then we will measure the current. Here is the potential current curve and this is the classic notation because we have a plus sign and minus sign here. So the positive sign of current is cathodic current and negative sign of current is anodic or oxidation current. Here the potential is measured versus silver, silver bromide electrode. Let me start uh, from the plus 0 0.5 volt versus silver, silver bromide. I'd like to sweep at the very first time, I'd like to sweep the potential from the plus 0 0.5 volt to the negative direction. So at the very first time, you don't have any Faraday current responsible for the reduction or oxidation, maybe reduction. Of course, we have a very small current for making the electric double layer or non-Faraday process. Around here, the potential of this point is um, about minus 0 0.1 volt versus silver silver bromide or 0 volt versus normal hydrogen electrode. Then uh, from this point you can observe some current. Uh, as you are going to the more negative value the current would increase exponentially. What is this current? That is the Faraday current responsible for the uh, proton reduction 
were hydrogen evolution reactions. So, the onset potential of the proton reduction is observed around the thermodynamic potential, which is the 0 volt versus normal hydrogen electrode, or minus 0 0.07 volt versus uh, silver silver bromide. Let's go to the negative direction from the plus 0 0.5 volt. No, no, no. To the positive direction. Then I'm moving the potential from plus 0 0.5 volt to the about uh, plus 1.2 volt. Then around plus 1.0 volt, you have the current. Then it is going to the more negative value of current exponentially. What is this current? This current is the Faraday current, current responsible for the bromide oxidation on platinum electrode. Let's go to the second case. Almost the same thing, but I have replaced the platinum electrode by mercury electrode. Uh, for the other electrode, we have the same electrode, silver, silver bromide. And in electrolyte, we still have proton and bromide minus anion in one molarity, but we have one more thing, cadmium, cadmium 2 plus at one millimolarity. Let me start from around minus 0 0.2 volt to the more negative reduction potential, negative electrode potential. Uh, the thermodynamic uh, value of the reduction potential of cadmium 2 plus at 1 millimolarity is around minus 0 0.2 volt. So, just after you pass the mi minus 0 0.2 volt to the more negative uh, potential, then you could observe some current. This current is the Faraday current responsible for the cadmium 2 plus reduction to cadmium. Then it is going up exponentially. So let me draw some line. So actually if you don't have any mass transfer limitation, the Faraday current is starting from around minus 0 0.2 and then exponentially going up like that. However, around here, you, the, your cadmium 2 plus is experiencing a mass transfer limitation. So current is limited like that. Sometimes it is going down due to the depletion of cadmium 2 plus on the surface of electrode. So let me write down. This is the charge transfer limited system. And around here, this current is mass transfer limited. And then depletion, DEP, L E depletion T I O N of cadmium two plus then current is going down. Also around minus zero point seven five volt some current is going up exponentially like that. What is that? This is the Faraday reaction responsible for hydrogen evolution reaction or proton reduction reaction. Due to summation of this current, okay, let me change the pointer. Due to the summation of this current for HER and the other current, sometimes saturated, sometimes coming down, responsible for the cadmium 2 plus reduction, you have a total current following this line. So the, the overall uh, the covers of those two reactions follows 
some stepwise then going up okay so let's go to the more positive direction of the potential from minus 0 0.2 and then also you could observe uh, uh, exponential uh, increase of the minus current which is responsible for mercury oxidation um, let me compare between those two IV or IE curves in terms of hydrogen evolution reactions. In the first experiment, hydrogen ev evolution reaction starts from around plus 0 0.1 volt versus silver silver bromide around here and then exponentially increase. However, in the second experiment, the unset potential of the same uh, electrochemical reaction was about minus 0 0.75. Again, plus 0 0.1 volt, but minus 0 0.75 volt. There is a big gap between those two experiments in terms of the hydrogen evolution reaction. Why? What uh, one makes the difference? In the first experiment, you have used the platinum electrode. Platinum flag is used as the electrode, and also the platinum plays a role of catalyst for the hydrogen evolution reaction. It means platinum accelerates the reaction rate of hydrogen evolution reaction. So you can find the unset potential of the current around the thermodynamic value, like 0 point, 0 .0 volts, uh, volt versus normal hydrogen electrode. However, in the second experiment, you have used the mercury. Mercury cannot play a role of the catalyst for hydrogen evolution reaction. And also, this hydrogen evolution reaction is intrinsically very slow in terms of kinetics. So you need to apply more negative potential to cause the reduction of proton for making the hydrogen evolution reaction current. So the gap between those two experiments in terms of the hydrogen evolution reaction on the potential is about plus 0 0.1 volt and right now minus 0 0.1 volt. 75 volts so about uh, delta is 0 0.85 volt. There is a big difference between those two experiments. So the choice of electrode is very important thing to decrease the kinetic problems. Let me introduce the concept of polarization. Uh, here is the polarizable electrodes versus non-polarizable electrodes. So what is the polarization? Polarization is potential change caused by current or the departure of the electrode potential value which is the same as the meaning of potential change upon passage of current or caused by current. The larger this departure or potential change is, the larger the extent of polarization. So here is the IV curve about the ideally polarized or polarizable electrode potential and current. So let me change the laser point to the pen. Uh, the good example of the ideally polarized electrode is boron doped diamond. And let me start from this point. Uh, let me assume that this point is placed on, let me say, zero volt 
and there is no current current is zero then I'd like to apply a current very tiny current to the positive value the positive uh, let me say this is the minus potential no no plus potential minus potential so is the cathode current and the other direction is anode current so right now I have applied uh, the some tiny positive current here and then it means I'm uh, pushing the electrons into electrode to induce reduction process anyway with this tiny positive current the potential value is going from the zero volt to let me say pro, uh, minus one volt here this point then it means uh, we are experiencing the big potential change even with very tiny positive current let me say this is the one pico ampere plus pico ampere even with this small current change but we have got the big potential change from 0 volt to minus 1 volt or at this time I have applied some very tiny negative potential like minus 1 pico ampere and what happens the potential changes abruptly from 0 volt to plus 1 volt so for the ideal ideally polarized or polarizable electrode we could easily change the potential even with the very tiny current so this electrode is easily polarized while polarizable that is the ideally polarized electrode let's go to the ideally depolarized electrode the example of this electrode is some reference electrode as you know reference electrode has its own electrochemistry chemistry inside of the electrode for, for example I have silver silver chloride reference electrode in a saturated KCL solution so let me start from this point uh, the potential value of the reaction between silver and silver chloride is about plus 0 0.2 plus 0.2 volt versus NHE and then uh, so so right now we are on here and then I have applied the plus one pico ampere to this electrode what happens so one pico ampere there are no change of the the uh, potential of the reaction between silver and silver chloride how about minus one pico ampere the same potential plus 0 0.2 volt versus NHE what happens inside of the reference electrode well, let me think about the reaction of the silver silver chloride silver chloride which is solid is going to silver plus plus chloride minus with um, no 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 the silver zero so plus one electron so 
silver chloride uh, is reduced with one electron which is going to silver metal plus chloride minus or vice versa so we always feel the reduction process or oxidation process when you have applied the current into this system so at this point there is some equilibrium between those uh, two guys silver metal and silver chloride when you apply some um, the positive potential it means you push it the electrons into this system then silver chloride is changed into silver we have a lot of silver chloride and we have a lot of silver so the reduction potential is not changing because silver chloride and silver is solid so there are no um, the, the reduction potential is changing also when you apply the negative current then you are trying to uh, pull down the electrons from electrode then what happens silver is going to silver chloride and still this electrochemistry provide the uh, same reduction potential into the system so we always have met the constant potential that is the ideally depolarizable well depolarized electrode why this is called depolarizable electrode because uh, when you applied any current but the system did not change in terms of the potential so it is not polarized however in the case of polarizable electrode you can easily change the potential or voltage values even with a tiny current change um, I'd like to give you um, a more practical uh, example uh, I have copper electrode and my question is copper electrode is polarizable electrode or depolarizable electrode let me draw the IV curve this is the potential E or V this is the current and the plus minus and then let me sweep the potential from some negative value into the positive value what happens at the very first time I, I means at the potentials you know the negative enough there are no oxidation of copper so there are very there is very tiny current observed however around plus 0 0.34 volt which is the standard reduction potential of copper copper 2 plus then you could observe the current which is responsible for the the copper oxidation so you could have this kind of graph in terms of current then uh, is this copper electrode polarizable or depolarizable I can say yes for both I mean the potential range more negative than the plus 0 0.34 volt or in this region you can say copper electrode is the ideally polarized electrode however after the plus 0 0.34 volt to the more positive values of potential then this copper electrode can be considered as the uh, depolarizable electrode so it looks like horizontal no no not vertical and this is this looks like horizontal so uh, depending on the applied potential you can define some electrode as the polarizable electrode or 
sometimes depolarizable electrode. Um, so, you know, some uh, ideally vertical line, but sometimes it, something like that uh, to the negative value or positive value, this kind of horizontal, no, 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 vertical line indicates a uh, electrochemical reaction. So this means some reactions. Vertical means some reactions. However, horizontal line means there are no reactions. So as a summary, ideal polariza pol polarization is a very large change in potential upon the passage of an infinitesimal current or a small current. However, ideal non-polarization case Potential is constant, independent of the amount of current. Subchapter number four, which is about thermodynamics and kinetics. Thermodynamics is about whether it happens or not. And kinetics is about how fast it goes. Here is my favorite movie, When Harry Met Sally. Um, by using this story, I'd like to give you the concept of thermodynamics and kinetics. At the very first meeting of Harry and Sally in University of Chicago at 1977, uh, Sally disliked Harry. So, after the trip from University of Chicago to the New York City, they broke up. However, five years later, by chance, they have met together and then they became friends. Twelve years, three months later, finally they have married. The, their marriage is a kind of destination, which can be calculated by thermodynamics. I mean, thermodynamics know they will marry. However, thermodynamics doesn't know when they will ma marry. For example, even if thermodynamics expected their marriage, but it takes 100 years or 1,000 years for marriage, then we cannot recognize their marriage in our life. So, the speed is very important thing. So, we need to have kinetic information about how fast it goes. Therefore, thermodynamics and the kinetics is the most important thing for investigating the electrochemical reactions. Again, thermodynamics is about uh, whether it happens or not, which is measured by the reduction potential. The other thing, kinetics is about how fast it goes which is measured by current. Okay, let me start with the kinetics. And also, I'd like to give you the concept of reversibility. And electrochemical reversibility involves the kinetic information. Here is the chemical reaction. And A is going to be and B can go back to A with forward rate constant and backward rate constant. So if the product B can go back to the reactant A, then we could say this reaction is chemically reversible. Sometimes forward rate constant is bigger than the backward rate constant, or sometimes vice versa. Sometimes they uh, be equal to each other. So independent of the kinetics, 
we can say this reaction is chemically reversible, also which is not related to equilibrium. Let me go to the concept of electrochemical reversibility. The electrochemical reversibility is a little bit different from chemical reversibility. The primary requirement of electrochemical reversibility is, of course, chemical reversibility. Here is the electrochemical reaction. Oxidized species plus and electrons is going to reduce the species with fourth rate constant. Also, the reduced species is going back to the oxidized species uh, with backward rate constant. That is the situation. So, this reaction is chemically reversible, of course. But still, we cannot say this is electrochemically reversible. We need to have one more condition, that is, the reaction is kinetically very fast or facile, enough to reach equilibrium instantaneously. So, when we are saying our reaction is electrochemically reversible, we need to have two conditions. The first one is chemical reversibility and the uh, second one is the reaction should be kinetically very fast. Uh, please memorize three keywords and the meaning of three keywords are exactly the same. The first one is of course electrochemically reversible uh, which is equal to facile and or fast. The third thing is Nernst Chan. Tian. So Nernst Chan. Nernst Chan reaction means the reaction is following the Nernst Chan the non, uh, Nernst equation. Following the Nernst equation. Uh, I have said the reaction should be kinetically very fast enough to reach equilibrium instantaneously. So this equilibrium can be described by Nernst equation. So electrochemical reversible reaction is also called Nernst chan reaction. Let me go to the table in the bottom of this slide. And the first law is about fourth rate constant of electrochemical reaction. And the second law is about backward uh, reaction rate constant. L stands for large or fast, and S stands for small, and M stands for middle or medium. So, let me think about several situations. We have very large forward rate constant and very small backward rate constant. In that case, we could say this reaction is chemically reversible. How about uh, the small fold and large backward or small fold and small fold? Those three things can be uh, said to be chemically reversible, but we cannot say electrochemically reversible. Um, how about the first situation? We don't have any uh, backward reaction, so only thing we have is very slow forward reaction. In that case, we cannot say chemically reversible nor electrochemically reversible. And the other case is also, also the same. And large and middle chemically reversible Middle forward and middle backward chemically reversible, but we cannot say electrochemically reversible. The only one case could be electrochemically reversible. So, what is that condition? We should have very large forward rate constant, and also we should have very large 
Bergold rate constant. Only in that case, we could say electrochemically reversible. Of course, chemically reversible. So, we have very fast fold and uh, Bergold reactions. Then, we could easily reach equilibrium instantaneously. That is the electrochemical reversibility. Again, electrochemical reversibility have the concept of kinetics, which should be very fast. Um, uh, let me explain about the kinetics by using activation energy. As you know, activation energy is closely related to the kinetics. This is the Arrhenius equation. Rate constant is equal to pre-exponent term and then exponential function of minus activation energy per RT. The term inside of exponential function is a kind of relative energy term. So activation energy and what is RT? That is the thermal energy. So if you have very large activation energy with respect to the thermal motion of molecules, then uh, you could have a very slow rate constant. Let's go to the free energy diagram along reaction coordinate of on electrochemistry. <coughs> right now, uh, we are on the equilibrium potential, so E equal to equilibrium potential, and then we have one curve for the reactants, which are the sodium plus plus electron, and, and the second curve is about the product sodium matter. So this free energy diagram is about sodium ion reduction to sodium matter. So at equilibrium, we have the same level of reactant curve and also product curve. So activation energy is the same between fold reaction or reduction and Bagold reaction or oxidation. So, the same activation energy is going to the same rate for the four and Bagel reactions. That is the equilibrium. And then, let me apply some positive potential. It means my applied potential is more positive than equilibrium potential. Um, right now we have applied positive potential and then we can control some curves uh, in the free energy diagram. Which one can be controlled? Which is, uh, that is the uh, reactant curve or product curve? I have said electrochemistry can control the electrons of electrodes. So, Electrons are involved in the reactant curve, so we can move this curve or reactant curve upward and or downward. I have applied positive potential. It means we'll make the reactant curve to the lower energy. So from this dashed line into this solid line for the reactant curves. Then, right now, the activation energy of fold reaction is larger than the activation energy of backward reaction. So like that. Then it means the fold reaction rate is smaller than the backward reaction rate. Like that. The so fold reaction and backward reaction. So the overall reaction is going from the right to the left, so oxidation happens from sodium matter is going to sodium plus. This is of course thing because right now we have applied the positive potential. So we could have uh, the 
oxidation proceeds or vagal direction proceeds. Then I'd like to, at this time, I'd like to apply uh, some negative potential. It means the reactant curves containing electrons is moving upward to this solid line. Then right now, activation energy of vagal direction or oxidation is um, larger than the activation energy for the forward reaction or reduction. So, overall reaction goes from the left to the right. It means reduction is favored. Also, it is of course thing because we have applied the negative potential into the system and then of course reduction happens. It's time to go to thermodynamics after the kinetics. Here is, uh, okay, so you would have various equations for describing kinetics of your systems. However, you have only one equation for thermodynamics of electrochemistry. That is the Nernst equation. Nernst equation is the equation to correlate between reduction potential and concentration. So let me start with the very basic Gibbs free energy equations. Uh, Gibbs free energy change of reaction is equal to Gibbs free energy change at standard state plus RTR for ideal gas constant and T for absolute temperature by log function of reaction quotient. As you know, reaction quotient is the ratio of uh, product per reactant. So in the ca case of electrochemistry, we could write down activity of reduced species per activity of oxidized species in the log function. Then it's time to convert the Gibbs free energy into the reduction potential. Delta G is energy and then of course uh, which is determined by quantity of charge with voltage. And then Q is going to the charge of electrons like minus NF and then the, the potential term or voltage term could be described by the potential minus equilibrium potential. Where the same equation is working on the standard state. Then we could obtain the first version of Nernst equation. The potential is equal to standard potential minus RTNF Rn reaction quotient or reduced species per oxidized species. Um, when you put the, uh, I mean in the presence of activities of all uh, compounds is equal to 1, then the reduction potential is the standard reduction potential. Of course, standard means activity is equal to 1. However, okay, this is the first version of non equation. However, um, it is a little bit difficult to measure the exact value of activities. So next, and, and then next, activity is closely related to concentration. 
the proportionality between activity and concentration is activity quotient gamma or I can say reaction quotient uh, of activity is equal to the product of reaction quotient of uh, activity quotient and co uh, the, the quotient of concentration. Okay, so let me put this term into here and then the log function is split into two terms. One is for the activity coefficient gamma and the other thing is for just concentration. Then let me merge the first two things into E0 prime which is called formal potential. The other thing is the same. So um, this is the second version of non-state equation uh, shown in this slide. And then the big difference is E0 from, from standard reduction potential to the formal reduction potential. The other thing is the quotient of activity is used, however, quotient of concentration is used for the second uh, reaction equation. Um, so, it is difficult to measure the standard reduction potential because we should uh, have one activity of each component. However, in the second case, uh, it is very easy to obtain the formal potential because we we'll use just concentration term for the reaction uh, quotient. We are still on the thermodynamics and I'd like to compare the thermodynamics between chemical reactions and electrochemical reactions. This slide is given to the chemical reactions and right now we have A and B. A is going to be with fourth rate constant and B is going back to A with backward rate constant. So blue uh, square stands for A and uh, red circle stands for B. So at the very first time uh, we have a beaker and then inside of beaker we have some electrolyte uh, no no not electrolyte we have the mixture of solution so uh, 3a the blue square and then red circles about the uh, product b so let me say those two guys are equilibrated to each other so equilibrium potential is equal to uh, B per A is equal to 3 over 3 is going to 1. So equilibrium constant is 1 in this case. Uh, let me introduce two uh, reactants, blue rectangular or squares. And then at the very first time, we have the quotient at 3 over 5 because we have added two more uh, re the blue square. So 3 over 5. However, after some time, um, the, 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 there uh, is an equilibrium developed between A and B where reactant and product. So uh, one of the added uh, square is converted to the red circle. Then right now, equilibrium constant is 4 over 4 is going to 1. So it means even after adding two reactants, the reaction, uh, no, 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 the equilibrium constant is not changing from 1 to finally 1. Or even if I have added two um, the product into the system, but one of two is converted to the reactant 
then finally we have reached the same value of equilibrium constant at 1. It means we cannot stop going to equilibrium. It means we have always the same value about the equilibrium constant. Uh, this is the thermodynamics, uh, no, no, the equilibrium about the electrochemistry. So this is the electrochemical reaction. And equilibrium constant could be defined by forward reaction rate per backward reaction rate is equal to sometimes activity of reduced species per activity of oxidized species and activity of electrons or very s the, the, the almost equal to the concentration ratio. In that case, activity of electron or concentration of electron is considered to be 1. So let's go to the surface of electrode. At equilibrium right now, let me assume that we have three oxidized species and three reduced species. Therefore, the equilibrium constant is equal to 3 over 3 equal to 1. Then uh, let me apply some negative potential into the system. And then in that case, uh, two oxidized species are reduced. For example, when we have applied some negative potential, uh, which is negative than the equilibrium potential. So right now, the quotient at uh, uh, negative potential is equal to 5 over 1. So the equilibrium constant is changing from 1 to 5. Where uh, we could apply the positive potential. So some portion of uh, product or reduced species are oxidized. Then right now, the quotient or equilibrium constant at E1, where, posit uh, where a positive potential is equal to 1 over 5, 0 0.2. So, um, we could control the equilibrium constant in the electrochemistry by applying the potential.